Now you're going to want to start off with all-purpose joint compound. It comes in a five-gallon pail or a box. Now maybe you're wondering, what's the difference between the joint compound you purchase in the box or the joint compound you purchase in the five-gallon pails? And the only difference is this, you're paying for the pail. Boxes tend to be purchased by contractors because, well, we have plenty of these. You don't need a pail. Why pay for it? These are the two most popular drywall tapes you can use. Now, this right here, this is mesh tape, and it's a real favorite with DIYers. It's tacky, and it has the ability to adhere to the surface that you're taping. But the downside to using mesh tape is, well, it's expensive, and it's not as strong, believe it or not, as paper tape and it has a built-in feature. It has a crease going right down the center, which makes it really easy to fold and use in corners. Now, I gotta tell you this, if you are gonna use the mesh tape, because it is easier, just make certain that you use the proper joint compound with mesh tape. You wanna make certain that you use setting type joint compound and not the pre-mixed air-dried joint compound. Don't use a utility knife to cut your tape. You just wind up damaging the drywall underneath. What you want to do is you want to use your knife instead. And it works equally as well with mesh tape. Now, if you are going to use mesh tape like this here, it's always a good idea that after you get finished using the tape, fold it over. It gets very difficult to find the beginning of the tape once you want to use it again. So that's just a little trick to make certain that you do that before you put it away. Now you definitely don't want to go on the cheap with tools. Let me show you what you need. Now when it comes to tools, you really want to make an investment in tools. These are tools that you're going to keep for a long time. It just doesn't pay to purchase cheap tools. And you want to make certain that you've got a good variety of tools as well. Now this right here, this conforms to the bucket and it makes it easier for you to get joint compound directly from the bucket itself. This right here, this is a corner trowel and it does a superior job in angles. And what I mean by that is corners of rooms or where a wall meets a ceiling. This is a tool you want to have. Now, in addition to those two tools, the standards are a smaller, like five inch, six inch taping knife like this one. And you'll also want to use a larger taping knife like this one as well. Now, what I'll say is this, a lot of folks, they don't like taping knives. They would rather just use a trowel and a hawk. You've got a few different routes you can go. You can use a hawk and a trowel. You can use the mud knife along with the mud pan, or you can just scoop directly out of the bucket. Now you'll want to keep a bucket of water close by because you want to keep your tools nice and clean while you're using them. Now you can use a paintbrush like this or you can use a browning brush. That's what this is to keep those tools nice and clean and it'll lead you to a more professional looking job. Okay, it's time to mud. I've got a five inch taping knife here. You can go a little larger if you feel comfortable. It's all about what you feel comfortable using. This is what I'm gonna to use today to start with our flats here. Now when you're doing a bedding coat, you have to apply it heavy. And to do so, there's a couple ways you can do it. I like to apply it this way from the side, but you can always just, you know, heavy coats all the way down. Again, it's just what you feel most comfortable with. Okay, I've loaded up my knife here and I'm just gonna lay it on. Now you don't want too wide of a band to start with your bedding coat. You've just got this little indentation here that you want to fill up. Now I take my knife and I'm just gonna graze across lightly. Now it's time to apply our tape. We just take our tape and we just stick it on like so. Now when you get to the end, use your knife like this 
to make the cut. Now that we have our tape in place, we need to lay it down. Now what you don't do is you don't start at the very beginning because it, it'll bunch up on you. So what you want to do is you want to slide down a little bit. Right about here is good and we're going to move in this direction toward the end. Once you have the tape embedded, you can continue on in the opposite direction. Now what you want to do is you want to apply firm pressure but not so hard that you squeeze out all the joint compound because then you get mud starvation and the tape won't adhere in the way that you want it to. You get blistering. You want your bedding coat to be the heaviest coat you apply. You may feel a need to taper the edges a little bit. See? That's tapered. And, and that's going to promote less sanding. Now when it comes to covering up the screws, what you want to do is you want to take your mud like this and you want to lay it on the side. And you want to start at the lowest possible screw. And then you just want to slide on up. And then you come right straight down. Our first coat's dry, and now we're ready to apply our second coat. What you don't want to do is sand between coats. Now the reason for that is you want the surface to be, believe it or not, a little rough. So that when you do apply the second and third coat, well your joint compound has something to really grab hold of. And that's why you want the surface left just a little rough. Now instead of sanding, what you do between coats is you take your taping knife or your trowel and you scrape it over the uneven areas. And the reason you do it is you want to knock off any of loose particles and level it up a little bit, but you're still keeping it a little rough for the next coat. And this way you don't get any particles in your joint compound that's going to, well, it's going to make for a bad job because you get a lot of tracks. Now, once you get to your second and your third coat, well, you want to thin out your joint compound sometimes just a little bit with a little water. Don't add too much because if you add too much, you can't take that water out because it's going to lay down a lot better your second and third coat because you want that nice and tight. So just a little tiny bit just to get a nice creamy consistency, but you got to have a drill and a mixing wand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trowel in combination with my 5 inch knife and I'm going to use my trowel to put the mud down on the joint. Now I come back with my 5 inch knife and I taper the edges. Now I'm going to use sanding screen. That's what this is here. And it's 180 grit. You may elect to use sandpaper instead of sanding screen. Now it's really easy to over sand with sanding screen. So if you prefer using sandpaper, do. Do use sandpaper. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Now when it comes time to clean up, what you want to do is you want to go around the edges like so. You want to get all the residual mud around the side. Now before you put the lid on and store your mud for next time, this is something you definitely want to do. You want to take a little water, you want to take your brush, and you want to go along the sides and clean off all the excess joint compound because what will happen is it will dry and you'll get dry little tiny particles in your mud. And so next time you use it, you won't have to worry about your joint compound being contaminated with little dry pieces of joint compound that cling to the side of the container. So just make certain that you wash that thoroughly down with a little water and close the lid. Now I know what you're thinking. 
you're thinking that you know this guy right here. Nils of Learn the DIY, and you know what? You'd be right. Nils came down to, to help me out with the ugly house. What we did here is we had this giant opening, we had to frame it all in, and then we put the drywall over top of everything to make sure that we got it ready for the next steps, which Leah is going to take care of. Now he's going to be showing you the next step, and that's how to hang drywall. I want you to go check out his channel. It's Learn to DIY. And while you're there, I want you to subscribe. Show him a little love. This is Leah saying you can do this. And if you want to see more content like this, just click right here.